Now, the, the next of these perfections is a very important one. It's the perfection of patience. And this is the antidote to anger. Uh, this is again a huge subject and I can only skim the surface, but um, I think we can all appreciate that our daily life, our family life, our workplace and so forth are a wonderful field for practicing patience. Even just driving, of course your roads are very well disciplined, come to India. Um, <laughs> But nonetheless, driving and so forth, wonderful, wonderful opportunities for practicing how to relax inwardly and not react with irritation, frustration, anger. So how to develop patience? Well, as I say, this is a big subject. We can only deal with one or two um, points here. But one of them is that normally when somebody upsets us and angers us, we regard them as an obstacle to ourselves being tranquil and peaceful, nice, friendly people. I would be fine if it wasn't for my awful neighbor, or my dreadful boss, or my wife, or my husband, or whoever, you know. It's their problem. They are the ones which create all, all my difficulties, so I have a right to be angry. So in the development of patience, we recognize this is a very, very important spiritual quality. Not to react with anger in the face of something which we regard as being antagonistic. So as with any practice, as with any quality, we need to practice it, don't we? You know? So it's very easy to be loving and friendly and kind, surrounded by people who are loving and friendly and kind. I mean, I, for example, here everybody's so sweet and everybody's smiling and bending over backwards to be helpful and kind. And this is wonderful. But it can lull one into a false sense of complacency that one, therefore, is also loving and friendly and kind under all circumstances because one only meets with that. So, therefore, in order to really practice, we need people who are obnoxious. <laughs> serious. Shantideva, a great 8th century um, pundit in India, he said that therefore we should regard our, our antagonist, our enemy, as our greatest spiritual friend. Because they're helping us to develop this very important quality without which we, we will not be able to attain to enlightenment. So instead of thinking that this person is, is a, a problem for us. We should be grateful. And so when somebody is very difficult for us and creates a lot of problems for us, instead of getting all riled up and angry and upset about it, we can think, oh, thank you. Oh, you're so awful. That's, that's great. Now I can really practice. Without you, what would I have done? And then that transforms the whole situation. Now, of course, this does not mean that if we are in a heavily abusive situation, we just sit down and say, hit me harder. But it does mean that even if one is in an abusive situation, one can extricate oneself as quickly as possible, but nonetheless with love and compassion in the heart. The Buddha said that um, hatred does not cease with hatred. Hatred ceases with non-hatred, in other words, with love. 
And if, we, if someone is difficult to us and in return we get angry and frustrated, we've, we've doubled the problem. Do you understand? Like if somebody does something to us, cheats us or is difficult with us, and then we feel all this anger and frustration and bitterness in our heart, then we are torturing ourselves, right? It's not affecting that person. They're fine. We are only doing to ourselves what our worst enemy would wish for us. Right? So we're giving ourselves a double dose. Whereas if we take that and, and transform it into an opportunity to develop and, and to go forward, then nothing can harm us. It's part of our spiritual development. And this is not just with people, but also with circumstances. Everybody now is beginning to understand that difficult circumstances are actually our greatest opportunities, our greatest opportunities to grow. This doesn't mean that we have to manufacture difficulties and, and obnoxious people. Sit there, they will come. <laughs> 